Hello everyone, James Smith Grattan here. Welcome to the Never Ending Becoming. Happy to say this is the 56th episode and I'm coming to you from the woods of northern Wisconsin, a place I like to go on vacation every year. I'm also coming to you from the northern part of my Chevy Tracker, my 17-year-old Chevy Tracker. Uh, I myself have been in the car market this year. It's been a tough year to look for cars, which has me thinking about the difference between maximizing our decisions and satisfying our decisions. Uh, I've driven this car for 10 years. Um, obviously, family member or someone else drove it before that. It was a family member for me. But uh, I've been waiting to try to get a new car, trying to make sure I do the perfect thing, spend uh, no more money than I have to, uh, get features, that will age well. We're at a funny point in automotive technology where electrification and hybridization has actually come into full force, uh, or at least force. <laughs> Electric cars are still like 3% of the market. But it's now an option. You have to think about whether you want a gasoline, whether you want hybrid, whether you want uh, a battery, whether you want to join a, a car cult in the form of Tesla, and <laughs> you have everything that comes along with that. But specifically back to maximizing and satisfying decisions, something I read about in Paradox of Choice, a book about how we make decisions in the age of affluence, um, in an era and in a country where the options seem to be many and omnipresent. You want to buy, buy, a, buy a box of cereal. You want to get Fruit Loops. You want to get Lucky Charms. You want to get Captain Crunch. You want to get Raisin Nut Bran. Even if you know you want Cheerios, you want Honey Nut Cheerios, do you want multi-grain Cheerios? It can be a lot. Now, i um, probably going to end up just getting a RAV4 or something that's a contemporary replacement of the car I'm sitting on top of in this moment. But still, this being a time I'm on vacation, I'm thinking about how people do make decisions, why it's important to make an appropriate decision, but not try to make the best decision possible every time. And of course... Uh, be spending some time thinking about, talking about everything else that comes along uh, with a well-lived life. Really happy to have the opportunity to keep podcasting from a vacation setting. Probably will not see me as relaxed as I am now, uh, despite the extra funky setup and surroundings. And of course, not having a, a guest to, to carry the weight with me. But uh, vacation is a wonderful time. You know, we have to set some time aside for ourselves. Social media companies will take away our digital real estate, obviously our... Uh, chosen vocations and chosen families will take away some of the IRL real estate but we have to keep checking with ourselves and yeah I guess who we have become and who we used to be more accurately I've always been someone who wants to be somewhat careful with my money not spend unnecessarily on things that don't matter from what I know about personal finance basically if you make the correct decision about what house you live in and what car you buy or what your transportation expenses are, you're pretty much going to be good for every other uh, dimension of spending. I mean, people's housing ends up being a third of their budgets. I mean, transportation varies, but it's usually the second highest expense. And it's always been very important to me to think about maximizing those two decision decisions, where you live and then uh, what you ride, what you drive. Uh, been a tough year for that. You know, thinking maybe about what's best for me and what would be good for my driving and my pocketbook long term because there's been these macro factors that end up overlaying on that decision making that make that difficult this is of course the chip shortage that i'm referring to this is the used car and even now new car inflation that's occurred uh, i didn't expect a virus to come along which pushed people away from public transit situations which discouraged people from taking ubers or driving ubers because the last few years, the automotive industry was just struggling more and more. And it seemed like there was never going to be this time again where everyone retreated to, to big, enjoyable uh, rubber real estate, to big cars on the road. And it, it has exactly happened. The chips that they use in all the cars 
have um, been difficult to obtain. And so now they're building cars. They have the ability to produce cars, but they aren't able to finish them. They've gotten technologically savvy with their automatic braking and automatic lane detection, automatic high beams, and automatic everything. Uh, this is, of course, not even getting into the, the Tesla cult of cameras and all the tech that goes into maybe the other LiDAR-based technologies for Waymo that go into self-driving cars. It's a lot to consider. On the idea of maximizing versus satisfying a decision, I just want to say that it makes so much sense to maximize. Like me, naturally, it feels like you want to maximize because you're trying hard to do what's smart. You know, everything now is available for discussion. We have a lot of free time, especially in the developed world. We have a lot of things done for us. I mean, I still cut my lawn and do some construction on my home, but a lot of people don't do any of that. And even I myself, you know, you have to outsource certain things if you want to keep your sanity and, and keep your specialty in life. But when it comes to maximizing every dimension, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. I'm mentioning this now with the car thing because I probably could have saved five, ten thousand dollars perhaps by uh, buying a car even last year, like at the start of the pandemic, a time I was considering purchasing a vehicle, thinking that it must get better, that the prices must get better because people weren't going to be able to work. It would be hard to, of course, buy new cars, maybe even hold on to their old cars if, you know, someone who was a cashier is in a Q5, Audi Q5 or something. I'm not buying an Audi Q5. It's just the alliterative nature of cashier and Q uh, has tended to work out. But you find yourself with a maybe a micro mindset at a time where macro forces can be bigger. Uh, this also reminds me of my uh, most recent job. I uh, was in workforce development program where I was helping people get jobs in hotels primarily, like the hospitality sector. And I did that for about four years. Uh, I quit my job and left uh, March 6th. And then by March 12th, MBA was shut down. Tom Hanks had COVID. And the beginning, the beginning of the layoffs for the hospitality industry uh, began. People basically were not able to travel, so the hotels didn't have the same need for workers. So I'm sure there were tons of people that I'd helped for four years get employed. That was a, you know, a micro effort uh, that was kind of wiped away by a, a macro situation, which is, which is hard because I know we all try to do what's best with the information we have available. And we all want to feel like we have a sense of control over outcomes in life. Back to the cars. Uh, back to the cars. You, you, you do need to be thoughtful. You don't want to get caught by a car salesman, by someone trying to tell you that, uh, oh, yeah, inflation's coming, so you should, you should buy a car now because this thing is just going to inflate up to the cost of a, you know, a, a super yacht, right? This is going to... I mean, this this Chevrolet is, is is basically. I mean, this thing's going to be a Rolls Royce soon. I mean, you you can't listen to salesmen and people that are just trying to make predictions about the future. Future, you can't only do what's best in the moment. Um, but one thing I've been thinking about more and more was not spending an undue amount of time on any one decision or any task for that matter, because. With the extra free time we have in life, um, there's this phenomenon where your effort and the time expended on a certain activity can just greatly expand based on the time that is allowed for it. I mentioned this car being 17 years old. I think it's smart to have a car for a long time, but uh, it's gotten to the point now where I pull into a parking lot in Chicago, and this is the oldest car in the parking lot. I mentioned driving for a number of hours up to this place I'm at in northern Wisconsin. You know, zipping down the highway is one thing, but having been in the oldest car on a highway, it feels a little bit different. It, it starts to undermine your sense of safety in a way that maybe wasn't originally planned for when you were trying to penny pinch or save money. Now, no one can predict the future, and uh, I mean, a lot of people can't even understand the present, so we have to be easy on ourselves to some degree. But I do want to develop more systems to come up with the decisions that are good enough, right? Good enough sounds bad to me. Again, I'm trying to 
find the flaws in my decision decision making good enough is not what i want i want the best right uh this is this is what is an oscar wilde quote uh i have the simplest taste in life i'm always satisfied with the best not that this fully applies to me but i i do agree with that somewhat because i think it matters to try and to aspire but you can't let that get over inflated your intentions will never matter as much as the situation that you find yourself in. And, of course, you don't want to spend three times as much time on something uh, that you only get a return of 2x on. This is maybe the person who spends all their time polishing their home uh, or their garden. I'm a little bit... Uh, I'm a little bit guilty of that. Spending too much time polishing your hedging and your landscaping versus going out into the real world and making uh, maybe a difference that's a little bit larger, a little bit more worth your time. Now back to the maximizing, satisfying uh, point. I do want to like define that fully, brought up a few times. Maximizing is what you're trying to get everything perfected. Every element of the situation has been thought of and you're looking at all available options for what you're pursuing in life and satisfying uh, I believe in the book they call it satisficing satisficer or something but that's just for purposes of, of this podcast discussion I'm gonna just say it's a satisfaction thing basically the point is when you're looking to make a decision on something as opposed to maximizing and considering every available other website you can buy something on, say going to Newegg.com, going to Amazon, uh, going to Best Buy.com, price comparing across everything, downloading the Honey extension, spending four hours on something you would previously take 14 minutes in a traditional retail environment doing, as opposed to doing all of that, maybe just stopping once you've found something that satisfies what you need. Now, in the instance of this car, I probably should have just stopped once I saw that they had used RAV4s that could have been obtained for reasonable prices that would actually give me more space in the Chevy Tracker, that would have better gas mileage than the Chevy Tracker, and that would be safer than this Tracker. But I wanted to maximize. I wanted to wait to see if maybe I could get a hybrid for the, the same amount of money. I wanted to maybe see if... Something like the pandemic would change the auto loan system that's been in play. I've heard for a few years now that it's possible that the auto loan market is going to be kind of the new subprime mortgage crisis. That people are being given loans for cars that they cannot afford. That there are many people who go to buy their next car having not paid off their last car. And uh, I was hoping maybe even to take advantage of the situation. It's, it's saying out loud sounds cruel but it's the way I thought I was supposed to live. Try to buck the trend that's happening in society. When everyone's buying cars they can't afford, I would try to drive a car that I shouldn't be (laughs) seen in or that maybe uh, more accurately that was too unsafe relative to the type of car I could afford to buy. Anyway, let's... Let's uh, move on to summer, and um, maybe I'll tie back to the maximizing and uh, the used auto market later. But thinking again about summer and vacations and getting away and finding out who you are, I um, always found it to be valuable. One thing I did not get to on this trip uh, that I, I'm going to try to do again at some point this summer is read some fiction. I find myself only reading nonfiction and having a hard time checking out of my thought process and my calculations for the, the life I'm trying to create for myself and, of course, my loved ones. But I thought back to a lot of the times I used to come up here as a, as a kid, actually, in northern Wisconsin, and how I used to read something like Harry Potter. It ended up being a tradition because they were releasing these books like every year. And so I was finding myself loving this fiction world that I read in a world that looks nothing like my city world, my city life. And uh, I didn't realize at the time it ended up being very valuable for recalculating the decision-making of everything, especially as you're growing and changing, um, which, of course, doesn't ever really go away, assuming you stop yourself from making that continual improvement process in life. I hope everyone gets a chance to, to get on vacation and to think about who they've become and 
course who they want to be. It's been difficult. I, I know a lot of times we probably feel like we had enough of the alone time. We've had enough of the reflection time with Corona, but it's not one of those things you can bank up for like a year, spending like a year alone and then spending nine years constantly surrounded by people. It's one of those things you kind of have to keep taking your medicine on consistently. So I would like to encourage anyone who might be watching to set some time aside for yourself and make sure, um, you know, that you're, you're creating room for you to grow into because, of course, that will end up benefiting you and your social situations or anyone you're trying to love in a, in a day-to-day. I, can, uh, I, should, I should actually make a, a quick recording here of the sounds of my uh, butt caving in the roof of my car and then make like a remix with the, the theme music here if possible. <laughs> I'll have to do that at a different time. Maybe for the next time I, I record on top of the car, I'll, I'll make a drum beat with that. Anyway, I think I've said what I needed to say. Um, a lot of times when you're podcasting, when you're talking in life, anytime you're expressing something, a lot of times you're talking out loud to yourself. I feel like uh, I've done that here. Um, just to put a cap on the decision-making piece, I want to give myself and all of you, of course, permission to not try to maximize everything. Uh, maybe that, maybe it is that you found the printer that you need without going on the Brother P-Touch website with a, or the Brother website without going on HP's website, Epson's blog, Epson blogs, you know, Epson Pro user blogs, and and seeing uh, how DPI works and and seeing how ink cartridges work. Find something that works for you and move on. Uh, there are there's limitless things that we can spend time on, and we're getting to an era where we have maybe limitless time to work on things so make sure you're spending that time doing the things that matter make sure you're you're getting a, a good re- return on investment for the time committed and um, when you do want to spend time on something make sure it's because it lines up with what really matters to you and and not what some company has expressed should be important this is especially poignant for me because I don't really care about cars I haven't really cared about cars at all, and I'm kind of torturing myself, trying to make the perfect decision for what kind of car to buy or what's the smartest type of vehicle to purchase to put me in a financially healthy situation. But I don't really like cars. This isn't something I should be researching too much. This isn't something I should be devoting my sanity to. This isn't something that I should be stalking websites for, looking at inventory, in transit, uh, optional power grade options, convenience packages. Do I, is that the kind of convenience that matters to me? Whether it's, there are windshield wiper blades that get hot and cold? No. So why am I becoming an expert in it? And of course I must ask, ask trying to ask more questions on the show that I don't have answers for, what is it that we all need to be spending more time on probably more often than not, just spending less time on. Hope everyone has a good rest of their summer. Probably try to check in from the roof of this car again, uh, assuming I I make it up here on this bad boy. And uh, yeah, until next time, I'll see you. Bye.